5.7 combined gas law. First thing with combined gas law we're going to talk about is what's called Avogadro's law, and it's different than Avogadro's number. Avogadro's law tells us that gases at the same temperature, pressure, and volume have the same number of particles. So, so it doesn't really matter what gas it is, whether it's hydrogen, oxygen, water vapor, right? It doesn't matter. If the temperature, pressure, and volume are the same, they have the same number of particles. So what is pressure? Well, pressure is caused by the particles of the gas colliding with the walls of their container. So here's a gas, right, and, or here's a container with a gas inside, and as the gas particles collide with the walls, you know, they bounce back, but as they collide with the walls, they put pressure on the walls of the container, okay? The more collisions and or harder collisions gonna yield or lead to higher pressure. Things like lower volume and higher temperature also lead to higher pressure. And for all of these, the opposite leads to lower pressure. So more collisions, higher pressure, fewer collisions, lower pressure. Harder collisions, because they're moving faster, higher pressure, softer collisions, lower pressure. Okay, so now we're ready to take a look at the combined gas law. And if you look in your reference table, T, the combined gas law is P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. P is pressure, V is volume, T is temperature. Right, and these are on table T, the back page of your reference table. All right. So we're going to have to know relationships between things like pressure and temperature or volume and temperature or pressure and volume. And we're going to have to be able to look at this to figure it out. So the relationship between pressure and temperature is direct. Here's what that means. So we do a little graph here of pressure versus temperature. As temperature increases, pressure increases. See how the graph here is a straight line? That's direct, D-I-R-E-C-T, direct relationship. Then as pressure decreases, temperature decreases. Or when temperature decreases, pressure decreases. And this is something you could see. Take a balloon, blow it up, put it in the freezer. Is the balloon going to get bigger or smaller? Well, as the temperature decreases, so is the pressure decreasing, so it's going to get smaller. Volume and temperature, that is also direct. So that means if we do volume versus temperature, and the balloon thing applies to this as well, it's also direct. Higher temperature, higher volume. Lower temperature, lower volume. Pressure and volume is an inverse relationship. We don't say indirect, it's inverse. And that means as pressure goes up, volume goes down. Or as pressure goes down, volume goes up. And this kind of makes sense, right? When you squeeze something, is it gonna get bigger or smaller? Well, it's gonna get smaller. So as you increase pressure by squeezing, the volume goes down. That graph looks like so. It's kind of a uh, curve line like that. Right, so that was between pressure and volume. Okay, if you pay attention in math class, I know, right? That's kind of like saying x times y is equal to a constant, like a number one, for example. Okay, very important thing when we're dealing with the combined gas law, we have to remember to always use Kelvin's. Remember, we were only allowed to use degrees Celsius when it was a change in temperature. Since there's no delta here, we have to remember to use Kelvins. All right, let's look at an example. An ideally behaving gas occupies 500 milliliters at STP, standard temperature pressure. What volume does it occupy at 546 Kelvins and 980 kilopascals. Okay, so combined gas law, P1, 
V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. So over here on the right, now this is going to take up a lot of space and a lot of time. You just got to get used to it. P1 equals V1 equals T1 equals P2 equals V2 equals T2 equals. Now another crazy thing we're going to have to get used to here is that a lot of questions we're going to see different kinds of units, whether it's milliliters versus liters, whether it's kilopascals versus atmospheres or, you know, tor, millimeters, mercury. It's okay, we just have to remember that we stay consistent. So let's see, how are we going to fill these out? Okay, an ideally behaving gas occupies 500 milliliters. So the volume one is 500 milliliters at STP. That means standard temperature pressure. Now all year I've been telling you, you can just kind of sort of just ignore STP and just say normal. Now it becomes important. Okay. So standard temperature pressure is on table A, and it tells you that standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. So we're starting off here at 273 Kelvins. And standard pressure is 101.3 kilopascals. What volume, what volume does it occupy at 546K? 546 kelvins and 980 kilopascals. Okay, so what are we solving for here? We're solving for V2. So we're solving for V2. So now I have to do a little bit of algebra. I need to rearrange this just like you do in math class. All right, so that if we multiply both sides by T2, cancel out here and it's up in the top here just like the same as if we took this and moved it to the top if we divide both sides by p2 now it's on the bottom here it's like we moved that to the bottom we end up with v2 equals p1 v1 t2 over t1 p2 i know seems crazy now don't worry you're going to get used to it because we're going to practice it a lot all right, I'm going to write now. I'm ready to plug and chug without throwing away my units. 101.3 one kilopascals times V1, 500 milliliters times T2, 546 kelvins. I'm going to draw a little line here so I don't bump them into each other. Divided by T1, 273 kelvins. Divided by P2, 980 kilopascals. All right, next I'm going to cancel units. Kilopascals, kilopascals. Kelvin, Kelvin. The only unit I'm left here with is milliliters. Is that a unit of volume? Yep, so I probably set it up right. So now I'm ready to plug these things into my calculator. And I get 101.3 times 500 times 546 divided by 273, and the answer to that, divided by 980. And my calculator tells me 103.367 blah blah blah. Let's look at significant figures. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, because there was a dot here. 980, there was a dot there. So I'm allowed three significant figures in my answer, which is 103 milliliters. All right, question time. All right, these are easy. Nothing like that example we just did. How does the gas exert pressure on the walls of its container? When temperature increases, what happens to pressure? And when volume decreases, what happens to temperature? So if you can't answer those, you really need to go back and rewatch the video. All right, that brings us to the end, and I will see you guys in school.